We're going to talk about animals today, okay? That's a lecture, okay? So we're going to go through animal kingdom, all right? Uh, I've been doing that for like six, seven years, and it pretty, worked pretty much nicely teaching their inheritance and, and uh, all the aspects of uh, um, uh, this half of the semester that we're going to go through. So um, we want to create, uh, create a class to demonstrate an animal. Okay, and to do so, I created a class, and it belongs to uh, Seneca College, apparently, this animal. Okay, it's in SDDS namespace. Um, um, the class is animal. It's going to have some private and uh, public properties, and we're going to go through it and start uh, giving you examples of it and, and, and kind of teach inheritance and, and all the things that we need to know about uh, object oriented, rest of object orientation through that. Let me pause the recording. So, um, to kind of, I know we are actually, we want to teach uh, uh, the inheritance stuff, and I, uh, we want to make sure that uh, I am not going to uh, create any um, distractions, but I think it's better for me to actually uh, use the little things that we have used at the beginning of the semester, like dynamic memory allocation, although we don't need it, but I'm just going to put it on a base class, so it's kind of a review too, okay? So what I want to do is to create a, an animal, and an animal, uh, the, the animal that, is, that interests me, uh, has only a name, so what kind of an animal I have, that's what I need. And for that, I'm going to use a character pointer because I don't know what the length of the animal uh, name is. Then I will uh, actually um, use dynamic memory allocation for it. And to do that, I will assume uh, that I would need uh, a constructor for animal that accepts, uh, again, constant character pointer, as I always tell you. If you don't change something, you've got to make sure that it's constant. And I'm defaulting it to nothing. If I want to create, uh, default an animal, it puts it in a safe, empty state automatically. So that's going to be the default constructor for it. Let's split the window. If any of these you think is vague and you don't understand what the implementation is doing and how it's working, stop me, okay? I have my cheat sheet over here, so m much of the code I will just copy and paste, okay? So, uh, to set the animal name, uh, so, what I, so to actually create uh, 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 a, an animal, uh, I will create a, uh, so this is going to be my uh, uh, constructor for it. And uh, as you see in a constructor, I'm actually using a function called name that sets the name of the animal. Now, the name of the constant uh, of the argument that I have is name, and the name of the method I want to create, I haven't done it yet, is the name, is name it too. So there's a conflict between the two names in the scope that we have. So if I just mention name over here, it thinks I'm talking about the argument. But I am going to create a set function, which is going to be essentially uh, uh, the function that is setting the name of the animal. So I can rename it to something else later on. And that's my function, void name constant character value and it receives the value and sets the name. And to write this function, I do the usual thing that you do with sets, which means uh, essentially uh, I will do a little dynamic memory allocation and do all the good stuff that I am supposed to do for the, for the name, which is essentially uh, writing something like this. First, I'm going to delete the value. Again, when you are creating a function that is halfway through everything and you don't know if the function is going to get called at the moment of creation, you have to make sure you deallocate the memory before you set anything, and that's the set. Then I'm going to uh, uh, check to see if the value actually exists or not. If it does exist, then I'm going to set the name. 
I always add plus one to the length of the uh, string that is coming in. Then I'm going to copy uh, with ease because I know I have exactly the same amount I want. Otherwise, I'm going to set the, uh, uh, the animal to empty. Um, we have all done this, and we know exactly how it works, right? There is no problem down to here, hopefully. Are we OK? Are we OK down to here? Any problem? OK, and the set empty function, again, uh, is a normal thing like always. So I'm going to have the set empty function carried over here. And set empty function, where are you set empty? <clears throat> My set empty function essentially deletes the name and set the name to null pointer. That is my set empty. Any problem with that? Are we good? All right. OK, so those things are fine. We have done it. Now, if I want to actually get the name of the animal, I need to have a query to tell me what the name of the animal is. And for that, I overload the function name. OK? But this function receives nothing. It's a constant function. It doesn't change the content of the of the class and returns a constant character pointer, which is essentially the name of the animal. And how to implement it is a two-second thing. It essentially gives us a, a secure access to the value of the name. So I return m name, but I'm returning it as a constant character pointer, and I'll make sure that that method cannot change the 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 class itself. We're good down to this point. Stop me. I'm just, these are just things that we have done 55,000 times. So I'm just bringing it on one by one. Any place that you think something is vague, stop me. So I'll put more explanation. I, I give more explanation for it. Are we OK down to here? Are we OK? The question I have over here is this. What happens if we do this instead of this? It's a common mistake, so I'm bringing it up. What happens if, if instead of adding 1 to the length of the value, I add to the value and then take the length? Anyone knows? Let's say it's lion. So lion, just a second, lion is four characters, correct? So the first one, line 14, it's going to be 4 plus 1. It's going to allocate five characters, correct? What's going to happen in the second one? What's going to happen? What's going to be the outcome? How many characters is, are, going to, uh, are going to be? OK, so you two don't answer. I want other people to think, OK? What's going to be the outcome? What is, what's going to SDR land value plus 1 return? 4, no. It's not going because lion returns 4, right? If it was just value, it would return 4, because lion is L-I-O-N, and that's 4, right? It would return 4. Two people answered correctly, but I just silenced it so everybody else thinks. What would it return? What would it return? What would it return? What do you think? OK, what does value hold? Can anybody tell me? Pardon me? A char pointer, which inside is what? What we keep inside the character pointer? An address, correct? We hold that. So value stores an address, correct? And that address is the address of the beginning of those four characters lion, correct? No, I added one to the address, which means instead of L, it's going to point to I now. Correct? Which means it's got to be the string length of iron, not lion. Which means it's going to return three now. So instead of allocating five spaces, you are allocating three spaces. And then it's going to fail, and you're going to say, what the heck happened? I have segmentation fault in here, or something like that. All right? So careful with that one thingy. This is a very common mistake. I, I see it all, all around. 
don't use that. Okay, I just put that as a comment over there and let it be. <clears throat> yes. Name function for the existing object. Okay. Then are we going to have errors? Or? No. If we use the name for the existing, that's the idea. We have delete over there. Delete wipes out the name first and then reassigns it to a new one. So we are in the clear. It's actually perfect. It is written so it can be used halfway through the thing. That's why we have the delete statement at line 14. 14? 12. All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And the reason, again, that we have over here this name is to clear the co conflict between the argument name and the method name. This arrow over here, for all those people who have done this in the test, that's wrong. You can't do this. Why? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. For all those who did this, that is wrong. Remember what I told you? When you actually put a star behind this, that star belongs to what comes after name, not this. If you want the star to work on this, become target of this, so you can put a dot afterwards and use it as a member, you have to put parentheses around it to enforce that asterisk to, to affect this. That's why I never use it. It's too many things to do, open bracket, yada, yada. Instead, just put an arrow and you're done with it. Okay? Remember, so if you put a star before this, it applies to the member, not the this. Okay? Are we okay with this? So these two are the same. I'm just going to put that thing as comment. So essentially, this is potato, and this one is potato. Okay? Same thing. No difference. Are we okay with this? Of course, the second one is easier because you're only adding two characters to do, gain the access. In the first one, you have to have four characters. So less keys pressed, let's use the other one. Whenever you want to gain direct access, whenever you want to gain the target of an access to gain to the target of this, use arrow. And always tell to yourself, arrow hits the target. OK? Arrow hits the target. So if you put an arrow after a pointer, it means the target. It means the star thingy that you had. It means target of. Okay? Remember, always, always, always. All right. Questions now to here. So these were all to create uh, an animal that has a name. Okay, and we created some debugging stuff over here that actually shows what happens, creating this, creating that. And, uh, and uh, I kind of uh, did not do what I always ask you guys to do. I said as soon as you have dynamic memory allocation, as soon as you create your, your uh, constructor immediately, what do you do? You create immediately your? destructor to make sure you don't have memory leak. I did not do that. So let's do this. All right. So I can actually uh, write the destructor right over here. So I'm going to say uh, animal. And I want to create a rule without you knowing what the heck that rule means. I want you to remember something. Specifically, I'm telling you like this, the first time you hear it, you can associate it with this one, so you can kind of uh, remember it forever, okay? From now on, as of today, no matter what we tell you when we ask you to create a destructor, okay? From this moment till the moment you die, okay? Whenever you create a destructor, okay, make sure you add this keyword in front of the destructor. Why? This is because the sky is high, all right? I'm not going to tell you why. You're going to find out later on. But I want you to first memorize it, then understand it. Anytime you create the destructor, you put this magical word in front of it. 
virtual. Why? Because the sky is high. I'm not going to tell you why. Just remember it. Destructors always will have a virtual in front of it. You're going to find the benefit later, OK? Not now. And then you create your uh, destructor like you did before. So uh, exactly as you have done it uh, many times, you're going to do it again same way. So uh, there is no uh, change in the implementation. It's just the, uh, it's just the, the definition that changes. All right, and, and I'm going to put the destructor over here with some messages over there for us to see what's going on. So essentially, uh, animal has a set empty over here for us. So the destructor is only line 28. But I put line 24 over there just to uh, uh, put line 24 over there just to uh, see how it's getting deleted so we can actually trace what we are doing. And of course, I need an is empty function to tell me if it's empty or not, which I'm going to do. All right. And I'm going to add is empty over here. Is empty is uh, pretty simple and straightforward. So is empty simply tells me uh, if name is null or not. Now, first, I'm going to write it in a kindergarten way that many writes, then I'm going to write you what is the correct way. So many of you will say, if m name is not, not equal to null PTR, then you're going to say return true or return false. It is not empty, right? Otherwise, return true. This is wrong in many ways. First of all, we're not going to have, we don't, we are not allowed to have more than one return statement in our function. That's against our religion. We don't do that. Okay. All right. So it's just, it's a big sin. Don't do that. Okay. We, one return statement only. All right. So unless you have to, uh, we're going to, and uh, you'll know when you have to, when your knowledge is high enough to know why you don't need to return a couple of return statements. So uh, I know people fix it by adding like a Boolean return, and they set it to true. They say, OK, if, if uh, if it is not null, set it to set it to false, and then return ret. All right? <clears throat> so this is the next thing that, that we do. But again, if you write this code, although this code is very nice and it's correct and everything is good, why well, everybody have a smile on their face? Did I do something wrong? Or everything's good? OK. <laughs> so, so, uh, so if name is not null, it is not empty. If it is null, ret remains true, which it returns true, which means it is empty, right? So <clears throat> the, the thing is that when you write something like this, it's just too much code to write. So essentially, it's saying you're saying, if this is false, return false. If this is true, return true. Is that correct? Is that what we are doing? So if this statement, sorry, if this statement is true, OK. So let's do it in a reverse order. So I'm going to say false. OK? My mind sometimes works in mysterious ways. So essentially, we are saying if name is null, return true. If uh, it is not null, return false, correct? So essentially, again, if the condition is true, return true. If the condition is false, return false. Therefore, it's always making more sense to return the condition Why having an if statement. Please remember that. Write your programs short, and the way they make sense 
so you don't have to write too much, too many lines of code. All right? Are we okay with this? Are we okay? All right. So that's our is empty. All right. So <clears throat> essentially, uh, but my is empty is not actually right. Is empty says if it's null. Uh, uh, an animal that has no name, is it considered empty? What do we do? If that's the case, so for our constructor over here, I am setting it anyway. Um, that's a no-name animal, right? So I'm trying to see. We're never going to have, like, that. just what's wrong with my logic now? Can anybody tell me what's wrong with my logic? Yeah, I'm seriously, I'm going to give you big prizes if you tell me what's wrong with my logic. If you have followed what I have done, there is something wrong with my logic now. What is wrong with my logic? Having the fact that I'm going to come, uh, I'm going to uh, come to you. Having the fact that empty, being empty, is name being null. Okay. Uh, what is wrong with the logic? Which means. It's, it's not, no, it's an empty string. It's a no name. Yeah, but you're on the right track, but the answer is not answering my question. It's one of those things that in, a, in, in marking, I'm not going to mark it at all because y you are kind of, can you tell me? No, I can have an, a, a, a species of animal that I haven't discovered yet. I'm, I'm going to name it later. You need that, right? Uh, what are we talking about? You're t uh, oh, uh, you're, you're seven. You were talking about line seven. Yeah. And what's wrong with that? Thank you, thank you. It's never going to be empty. It's impossible to be empty unless I call set empty. You follow what I'm saying? Like, the default constructor of mine defaults the animal. So it's not like it's, not like it's, a wrong, it's wrong logic. It needs commenting. I need to mention to people that if you're using this animal, if you actually call the default constructor, it's not going to be an empty animal. The default constructor defaults the animal to a no-name animal, not an empty animal. You follow what I'm saying? You follow, you follow what I'm saying? Okay, good. Are we okay with this? All right, just, but anyways, just uh, letting you know. Anyways, so now in this animal tester of mine, if I, if I create animal, A, and just that. So that's my program. And I'm going to run that program and see what happens. What do I, unable to start program? Oh, yeah, because, yeah, unable, because, uh, sorry, my solution is an actual solution. You've never had a solution before. You only had a project. Because I want to show different stages of development of this, I have many projects in my solution, as you see. So one is the animal that I have nothing in it. Then I have, you see that it's 27 November 8 NAB. That's the, that's the solution name. And my project is called animal. That's a project in here. And I did not mention to start which one because there are so many projects. I have to actually go to my animal and I say, uh, sorry, wrong, wrong right click. I have to go in here, right click on animal and say set as startup project, which means when you start, that's the main that starts first. In reality, when you create a solution, a solution has so many endings. Like you create uh, an e-commerce system. An e-commerce system has a point of sale. It has uh, storage. It has uh, web, uh, online shopping. 
it has so many different projects inside. It has accounting, it has payroll, so you have several projects in one solution. So when you want to compile it, it says, okay, which one should I start first? <laughs> like, I don't know which one to compile, okay? Which one to run the main when I start? Because there can be many mains in different projects, right? So let's run it one more time, telling that animal is the, it's what, we, what it begins with. And this is, this is what I get, creating an animal, creating the animal, removing the animal. That's all I'm getting. Because it's a no-name animal, it's not going to tell what type of an animal I have. But let's set it to empty and see what happens. If I say a.setEmpty and run it again, <clears throat> So I'm going to have creating animal, removing the empty animal. OK? So now you see that you, see, you understand what's the difference between empty and, and a default thingy over here. And how I accomplish that by simply checking to see what I'm doing. And these messages, we can always, I'm going to show you how to do it later. You can turn it on and off with a simple define statement. So you can have a debugging, you can add these things as debugging statements to your program when you are doing your program and when you want to run it actually to see if it works or not. With one command, you can turn all the messages off. You can do that, okay? I'll tell you later on. For now, we need the messages. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with our animal thingy now? Yes. No, it is not empty. When it's zero length, it's not empty. It's an animal without a name. It's an unknown animal. Right? All right, so what else we need to do over here to review? Let's do a, a and this is the final one, then we're going to start a new concept, OK? And we have our animal, then we can actually start doing stuff. <laughs> so. Uh, the new concept that, uh, like that, that, one more review is to, uh, to instead of, instead of checking. So, um, I want to see if the animal is empty or not. I have to say, if a dot is empty, correct? And then I'm gonna say, uh, see out. Animal is empty. Animal is not empty. Animal object is empty. OK, so, so I have something like this. Um, it's too much writing for me, and C programmers don't like to, to, to type too much. I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to say, if A, then write it like this. Sorry, not A. I want to say, if A, Animal is not empty, otherwise it is empty. So this is what, what I want to do. I want to be able to just check the A to see if it's empty or not. That's easier for me. OK, what is the criteria now? If you say if A, what is between braces of a condition? If, what is the type that I have to put inside the condition of an if statement? It's a Boolean, right? Because it's a Boolean, compiler will try to cast that A to a Boolean. But it's unsuccessful because there is no implementation for it. So now if I cast the Boolean, or overload Boolean casting, then I'm going to be on the clear over there. Which means I have to say operator, bool, Const, I don't want to change anything, and that's what I need to overload. How do I overload it? It's very simple and straightforward, which is essentially, I have to say, return not is empty, right? So I'm going to say, if it ever gets casted to a Boolean, return not is empty. So true means it is, it, has, it is a not empty animal. The other one says, and now if I go back over here, I'll see that there is no error. Because now compiler knows how to cast it. Now if I actually run this program, 
I'm going to get object is empty two times. Yeah, because one is for these empty and the other one is for that condition. Okay? But if I did that before, so in here I'm going to say animal fluffy. So that's the name of the animal. And I do that before is empty now. In here I can say animal. A dot name. Oh, what did I do? <sighs> sorry, 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 sorry. Or I can say fluff is here, that's easier. So I'm going to say a dot name is is here. And to make sure that if there is no name, the name is actually doing something right and correct. So uh, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, actually, forget it. That's fine. A program has a bug, but I don't want to fix it now. OK, it's too much work. Uh, to, I'm going off course. So now uh, if I run this program, uh, it's going to say Fluffy is here. And after it's empty, uh, coming up, it's going to say the object is empty, which is not compiling for some reason. Let's go. There you go. So first one's going to say Fluffy is here, and the animal object is empty two times. All right, so this is done. Now uh, the next thing, uh, it's a very simple thing. I'm not going to even talk about it. You know what it is. Uh, I want animal to get printed with C in and C out, so uh, I'm not going to uh, waste your time on that. I'm going to create two display functions. You know exactly how they work. It's, uh, it's an O-stream display that uh, sets it to uh, standard C in and C out. Then I'm going to have two uh, helper functions that help C out to work with this. And that's a standard thing. We've done it 55,000 times. Um, so. Um, uh, the read and display and everything, I'm going to just drop it in here and we know exactly how it works. So I'm going to bring it right down here. So display displays the animal, read reads the animal. Uh, and uh, uh, what is the next thing we need to do? Um, the display and, uh, 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 and uh, um, read uh, overload is done over there. So now we can print an animal uh, with uh, C in and C out. So I don't need to do a name over here anymore. I can do like this. All right? Any, so now if I run it, it works the same way. No difference. The only difference is that now it knows how to uh, actually show uh, the animal using C out. Are we good? Are we OK? Any questions, suggestions, objections down to this point? Anything? People? All right. So now I'm going to create the second project over here. So I think, let me see if I missed something. Oh, something extremely important. All right. Now that we have all these good stuff, let's add view behavior to an animal. Whoops. Now that we have an animal, we would like to see how the animal acts, moves, or makes a sound. OK, that's what we need to do. So we are creating an animal. We are encapsulating an animal. Down to this point, we just did the bells and whistles and the user interface. OK? And that's exactly what you're going to do with your project. For the project, I'm going to first ask you just to create a menu object so we can actually do the rest. All right? It's the same thing over here. We're just going to have that. All right? So act, move, and to implement it, we simply, for now, uh, printing a few messages over there to see what's going on. So essentially, I'm going to say over here, uh, Act, so an animal acts like 
whatever the animal, move like the motivated animal, and keeps going like that. All right? Uh, and uh, if it is empty, how does name act? I don't know. Let me, let's take a look. Name. Oh, so I have another bug over here. If it's empty, it's going to actually crash. Uh, if I actually uh, call the act of an empty animal, it's going to crash. But no sweat. Um, it's not my responsibility uh, to prevent the person who's calling an empty animal to act. They have the features for it. They can always check to see if the animal is empty or not before it, uh, they ask it to act, right? I provided the, the tools for the user, for the next programmer, to see if my animal is an active animal or not. If it's not an active animal, they won't call the act. If they call the act on an empty, uh, empty animal, the program better crash. OK? All right, so that's that. So now I can check. So let's take all these things. Uh, let's actually sa uh, let's save this. Uh, as uh, animal tester one. OK, and open animal tester again. It has a bug uh, Visual Studio for some reason. Anyways, it keeps throwing exceptions at me. All right, so now I can actually say over here, I can say a dot act, a dot move, and a dot make a sound. Okay? And if I run the program, obviously it's not going to be empty, so it's going to say Fluffy the animal is here, act like Fluffy the animal, move like Fluffy the animal, and sound like Fluffy the animal. Are we okay with this? Simple and straightforward. Any questions down to here? Any questions one? Any questions two? All right. And now let the lecture begin. Let's first create a new solution because I want to, a new project, because I want to keep going further and I want you, you to have the old one and then the new one is going to get added to it. So I'm going to create a new project over here, add, new project. And I'm doing this because you haven't seen this before. So uh, it's going to be an empty project. Uh, and I'm going to put it in today's lecture. So let's browse. So it's going to go to today's lecture. And I'm going to call it 02 cat. So we want to create a cat out of an animal. And that's where inheritance kicks in, OK? To see how we can use an already existing object to create new objects out of it, OK? So we create, and that's going to be our cat. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say add existing items. But I'm going to bring the implementation of the animal into here. So I'm going to copy the animal class. Copy, and I'm going to paste it in the current project. So now I have the animal. I'm going to say add it. So these animal uh, CP, they are copies of what I had in a previous one. So I'm going to set this one to the startup project. Oops. Set this one as startup project. Now it's going to compile this one. And now I can actually add a file called cat tester. Are we okay down to here? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? All right. Break. And we'll come back after the break, and I'm going to do the cat thingy. Please don't come and ask me questions during the break, because I'm preparing the next part of the lecture. I do want to come run and ask. It's kind of something that everyone So let me just, uh, you're going to have a break, and then uh, we'll continue. Now, please remind me to continue. I just had a question, like, if 
if since we just overloaded Boolean, can I overload anything else, like any other type? You can overload any type you want. For example, let's say if I want to, oh, magic. OK. Now, what I want to say is that, what I want to say is that, let's say uh, if I wanted to do this, let's say I have a constant character, I had character SDR here, say 81, OK? And I wanted to be able to copy the name of animal into that string. OK? So I wanted this to happen. I wanted to be able to do SDR copy into SDRA. If I wanted to do something like this, that's not going to happen. What is the second argument of SDR copy? No, no, no. Don't tell me it's a string. Give me the right answer. No, take a look. Take a look. You have to take a look. What, what is the second argument? Read that. Constant character pointer, correct? Constant character pointer. So for me to make this thing possible, I have to overload constant character pointer type for the, the, the animal. So I should come actually say over here overload operator constant character pointer and then const. Do something like that. Then I'll come to the animal thingy. Where is my animal? Hey? Where are you? <laughs> okay. Uh, animal. Uh, CPP, yeah. So I can come to animal.cpp, and in here, I can, where did I wrote, write that example? In cat tester? No. I wrote it somewhere. It's gone? OK. Anyways, but So I can do this now. I can come over here. Where is that Boolean thing? So exactly the same way. I can say animal operator. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, something strange is happening. Give me a second. Give me a second. Wait, 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 wait. Nope, 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 nope. nope. Stop. Let me just copy what I copied, what I did over here. Uh, close all documents. No, don't save anything, please. All right. Now that's because I didn't know which animal I opened. <laughs> I don't know if it was the animal inside the animal project or in, the animal inside the cat project. So that's why I'm opening it again. Animal, animal, and cat tester. Okay, for cat tester, I'm going to open the animal tester and copy the content for now just to, just to check it. Copy. OK, let's close that one. And I'm going to put that in the cast, cat tester for now, just to show you that. So um, now let's split the window and have that quickly done. And then we get continue. Um, yeah, so what I was saying was that I can do an animal header file. I can do over here operator constant character pointer. If I can write const would be nice, constant character pointer, and const again. And in here, I overload the exact same thing. So it's going to be animal. And in here, I simply return name, right? Because name returns the constant character pointer for the thing, right? So now if I actually come over here, and do character string, say, 81, I can actually come over here and say SDR copy into SDR the A. And it would work perfectly. Because now it tries to cast the A to a constant character pointer. Can it do it? Yes, I just implemented it. Therefore, it's going to go to that one and a constant character pointed that is the name that's going to be returned. And I'm going to have uh, uh, saying SDR is 
a copy of, and I'm going to say SDR. Okay, and if I run that, you'll see that it's going to be fluffy, right? Three years later, four years later, come, 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 come. Build errors. What are my build errors? Is unsafe. Oh, that thingy. Don't I have copy? All right, let's run it one more time. There you go. So now I'm going to have over here, SDR is a copy of Fluffy. You see that? And of course, at the end, Fluffy, the animal is going to get removed. Uh, every, everything's OK? All right, so that was the uh, question that was answered. Now let's go back to what I wanted to talk about. Now, I want to create a cat, OK? A cat is essentially an animal, and I want to do everything that a an animal can do, but I want to be able, the cat, to do it and more. Okay? So, what do I do? Do I start writing everything from scratch? No. What I will do is this. I'm going to actually create a class called cat. I'm going to include the animal header file, which has all the specifications of the cat. And then what I would do would be saying, I want my cat to publicly inherit everything from animal. By doing just that, just what you see. You see that? Now take a look. Of course, I have to include cat header file over here. You see that? So I don't get any error. But what happens to that fluffy thingy? I can't get that, right? Because I don't have a constructor in my cat. So I can create the same constructor for the cat. So I can create the same constructor for the cat. Let me just bring my cheat sheet over here so I don't have to type everything for you. All right? So I can bring the constructor for the cat. But I'm going to say, OK, my cat is called Garfield by default. If you're old as me, then you know what Garfield, who Gar Garfield is. If you don't, then sorry. Anyways, uh, OK. I uh, could call it Tom, if it were Tom and Jerry. Jerry was a cat or the Tom? Tom was yet? Yeah? Huh? Oh, <laughs> sorry, Tom. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. So, so, so now if if I but 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 if I do that, how does it know? I mean, like, wait a minute. <coughs> sorry. Cat is inheriting everything from animal, which means cat has a name. Cat has dynamic memory allocation. Cat can set his name. Cat can't call his name. And but how does it know what constructor of animal to call to set this thing? It doesn't know. If I am building a cat, it's like you are creating a two-story building. First, you have to first create the first story and then the second one over it. You cannot create a two-story building, but just second, creating the second story. That doesn't work that way, right? So now I have to tell, OK, although cat is an animal, but you got to build its animal part like this before you can build the cat. So I have to initialize its animal part. I just know how to do that. There is a place that I can initialize things that a class has. I called it initialization area. Do you remember that? So we can simply do that. So I simply go to the constructor of the cat. That's animal. Where's my cat? Come on, giddy giddy. OK, there you go. Cat. Now in here, I'm going to actually say 
cat, cat, constant, character, pointer name, all right? And then I'm going to say, pass this name to animal part side of me. Done. So I'm saying when you create a cat, pass the name to the animal. And everything else will work just fine. If I run this program now, I'm going to have Fluffy the animal, not Tom, because, <laughs> because I didn't default it. I set it to Fluffy, right? And it keeps going like that. But now, if I, so it actually goes with Fluffy exactly like an animal. And actually, it says, act like Fluffy the animal, not the cat. All right? So if I just default it, what's going to happen? If I don't put anything for cat, what's going to happen? Now it's not going to be a no name, but it's going to actually be Tom. Are we okay with this? Everybody's okay with this? Now, as you see, I just created a platform, a place in which I can add more to an animal without changing the animal. My cat is an animal. I, should, I wish I could bold and capitalize my voice. Okay? So, an anim, a, a cat is an animal. Okay? Remember that is. Is means inheritance in English language. A motorcycle is a bicycle that has an engine. Has is the property. Is the inheritance, which means if you want to build a motorcycle, don't start to reinvent anything. Get a bicycle, stick an engine, you have a simple, stupid-looking motorcycle. Right? That's essentially what it is. All right? So that's exactly what I'm doing in here. Now, I can actually add stuff to it. Wait, wait a minute. What is the difference between a cat and an animal? Cat has nine lives. Right? So let's add that one. I need to know how many lives my cat has. So I'm going to say over here, int, number, number of lives. Correct? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, they can provide me the number of lives. But if they didn't, it has nine. OK, so if it's with a cat that was in debt twice, it's, we're going to say seven. But if we don't, it has nine lives, right? And then we're going to come back to our implementation and actually say over here, Same thing, so I'm going to say integer, number of lives, and I'm going to initialize m number of lives to NOL. Are we okay with this? Did I see anybody? Somebody was, no? All right, so... Now I can actually add something over here, creating something, the cat. With uh, M number of lives, lives. And then go to new line. Am I going to new line? No, I'm not. So let's go to the next line over here so I can see what I'm doing. All right. And now if I run my program again, I will see first Tom the animal is created. Why? Because cat is an animal. The animal has to get created first. So the constructor of Tom the animal is called first. Then after that, it creates Tom the cat with nine lives. 
So it actually adds the lives to it. Okay? Uh, and we can kind of make the constructor's message a little better. So call Tom the animal cat, animal dash cat with nine loves. You can, I don't know. So we can actually, yeah, mm, actually let them both be. Okay? And Tom the animal is here, and yada, 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 and removing Tom the animal at the end. Uh, we can actually, now we can actually come over here and create a constructor, destructor for the cat and have the destructor do whatever the destructor is supposed to do. Now the destructor of the animal is actually deleting the name and everything for the animal. So if cat has some other stuff that we need to delete, we got to do it, right? So now I'm going to come over here. Um, and create a destructor for the cat. And in the destructor, I can actually mention that the cat is leaving too. So now the destructor of cat will be caught, called and you know exactly when because you know everything dies in reverse order, right? So first the animal, so when you create, when you create an animal that, in, that involves inheritance, first you create the base, then you create whatever you want to add to the base. When you want to remove that, you can't remove this. First, you have to remove the anim a cat, then you have to remove the animal. What, that's why everything dies in reverse order. So as you see, Tom the animal creating cat, then when it's dying, removing Tom the cat with nine lives, and then removing the animal part of it. Are we OK with this? Questions? Suggestions? Yes. No. OK. If I kill Fardad, the human will die? Of course we will die. What do we know? <laughs> Not the humanity. The human Fardad will die. Yes, I'm a human and I'm Fardad. If I kill the teacher, will the human die too? Yes, it will. Because teacher hopefully is a human. OK. Not an animal. <laughs> Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Don't, that was an amazing question. When you build an object that inherited some other stuff, everything is in one packet. You don't have separate objects. You don't have an animal and a cat. You have a cat that is an animal. The animal is in it. If you don't, you know what I mean, right? Okay, so you cannot just say, okay, I'm just going to kill the cat part and still use the animal. And the, you can't do that. OK? You can't do that. Of course, because the thing that we are creating is actually a cat, we want it actually to act like a cat and move like a cat, not like just an animal. I want it to have its own specific action. So you can always remember this word. It's going to come in final exam. Remember, you can always override the actions of the parent the action of the base, which means I can say a cat can act. A cat can move. And then implement those things specifically for cat. So when I do something like that, a cat acts playfully. All right? And the cat moves like the cat, not like an animal anymore. Therefore, when I run this program now, you will see that the sound is not improved. The cat is not meowing yet, OK? I didn't do that. So if I actually run this, you will see that it actually acts playfully like a cat, so it doesn't see the actions of the parent anymore. And then it moves like the cat, but it still sounds like an animal. 
There is one rule of inheritance that you have to always remember. The action closest to the type of the rest reference are the ones that are being called. I want you to listen to me. The actions closest to the type of the reference is the one that is being called. A is a cat, correct? So when I say A dot act, it's going to act like a cat. My name is Fardad. If you want your tongue to dance up and down, you can always call me Mr. Soleiman Lu. You can call me by my father's name. My name is Fardad. You can call me Soleiman Lu because that's my last name. Right? Correct? You can always call when you are uh, dealing with object orientation, you can always refer to a cat as an animal, right? What's an animal? That's a cat. So you can always refer to an object by its parent's reference. Are we okay with that? So there is no, nothing preventing me of creating a reference of type animal. So let's call it B. I'm going to call it reference. B, and I'm going to set that one to A. So B is actually the animal side of the cat. Now, if I actually write the exact same code, if I actually write the exact same code in here, if I write the exact same code in here, And I write B. So essentially, I am calling everything of a cat using its animal name. OK? You will see that. If I do that, it will forget that it's actually a cat. Take a look. Tom the animal is here. Act like Tom the animal. Act, move like Tom. So act playfully like the kid, Tom the cat is gone. Move like Tom the cat. Move like a cat is gone. It's an animal again. Why? Because I refer to it as an animal. Remember, the action of an inherited object are called that are closest to the reference that is being used. So if I call a cat using a cat reference, first the preferred ones are always the cat parts. If I go back and I say, OK, now you're an animal. Act like an animal. So I use the animal reference of the cat and I keep going through the same thing. It's not going to see the cat stuff anymore because the closest methods, the closest actions now to the reference are the ones from the animal part. Are we okay with this? Which brings us to the next thing. What if, what if, move or acting, let's say an animal can't act at all. Let's say the animal doesn't have an act movement at all. So I'll come and I'll remove the act movement from act, act from the animal. So animal can't act. But a cat can. I can always add stuff to a cat, right? If I come over here, then I'm going to have trouble with, call, with using the reference with act. Because now an animal can't act. Acting begins when an animal becomes a cat. So you can't just call. So it doesn't even see it. It's not that it picks it. When you look at an animal, when you look at a cat with an animal reference, it hides all the cat things of it. It becomes a pure animal. Therefore, that becomes an error now. But the rest are OK. Of course, a cat can act because that's a new action for it. It's a new thing that I added to it. An animal couldn't act, but a cat can. And that brings us to this.
Not this. What happened? Where are you? Very. Oh. Close it. One more time. There you go. So Tom the animal doesn't have an action at all. It's just making a sound and moving around. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? All right. Yes. No, no, it inherits everything. Okay, that's actually a good question. <clears throat> when you inherit, what happens to privacy? When a cat inherits an animal, what are different levels of privacy over here? First of all, we have different levels of inheritance. You can inherit publicly or you can inherit privately. I could say, or I can inherit in a third way, but I'm not going to. So we have three levels of privacy. At the beginning, we only needed to mention what public and private is, because that's what we had. Either public wanted to access the properties of a class, or the class itself wanted to access the properties of the class. Therefore, we either made things private or public. But now, we want to give children certain access to things that other people can't. I want my daughter to be able to drive my car, but no one else. So I want it to run in family. These are very bad examples. It just, because that has nothing to do with inheritance, but it's just, you know, trying to make sense of things. So I may want to give access of certain parts of, of the animal to the cat, for example, I, would, I want to say, okay, I don't, want, I don't want anyone outside to be able to ask an animal to move until they are a cat. Because cats, you can say come, but to an animal, it's going to come and eat you, right? So an animal is not supposed to be called to move by anyone else, okay? An animal should move only if it's a cat for us as a user, okay? So if that's the case, then I can actually come down here, bring the movement of the, of the animal, bring the movement on, of the animal in a new category. It's a semi-private category, which means I can say, that the movement of animal is a protected feature, which means a cat can access it, but no one else can. So if I have something like this over here, now, as you see, movement is not accessible by public. But I can always come to the animal part, and I say, hey, uh, sorry, always come to the cat part, and I'll say, Mr. Cat, first, move like an animal. So I'm going to say, animal, part, move. This is how you access the methods of the parent. You use the parent part's scope. So you simply say, animal, scope resolution. It's not dot anymore. Because it's not someone else's property, it's yours. You say, animal, move. And then, move like a cat. So first move like an animal, and then cat. So now, this is prohibited because, uh, in here I'm going to say it doesn't exist. I'm going to say, uh, animal. does not know how to act. Animal can't move by, uh, can't move by others except the children. Children is a very bad thing to say, descendants, okay, not children, but anyways. Okay, so you cannot, so now, 
if I actually run this program, you will see that because the action of the animal is protected, because the movement of the animal is protected, when I'm actually in the cat, I can say move like animal and move like a cat. But in here, I have no access to, to movement of an animal. That's one. So anything when you are doing inheritance, when you inherit an object publicly, all the access modifiers are inherited too, which means the protected properties of an animal are protected properties of a cat. Private properties of, a cat, of an animal are not accessible by a cat because they are private. OK? It means I, I have made, I, my computer, my, my daughter is not allowed to touch. It's my private property. I'm not going to let her. But my car is protected. I can give it to her to go for a ride. So you can actually decide what is chosen and what is not, what is actually accessible or not. And everything that is public for, a, for an animal, cat is public too, which means everyone else can access the animal through a cat. Ac sorry, that was a bad thing to say. Everyone can access the animal parts of a cat because uh, they are public. The public uh, parts of an animal, they can, they can be used in a cat. If you access an animal, if you say a cat is, a, a, a cat is inherited protectively from an animal, you can say a cat is inherited privately from an animal, OK? We are not covering those, OOP345. First of all, if you ever see anybody is doing a protective inheritance, there's a flaw in design. Why? Because the sky is high. When you learn object-oriented design, you will see it's a bad thing. It's like a go-to statement. We don't want it. You don't inherit anything protectively from other ones. You either do private or public, OK? But for your case, it's only public. We are not doing anything private, any private inheritance. Just remember that. All right? Are we OK? Yes. It's always everything. It's all inheritances are everything. So everything is inherited. It's your access that changes. When you inherit something publicly, everything is still the same. The only difference is that you cannot directly modify the private parts of the parent. I still can ask the constructor of the parent to be called to set the name. I can still call the, the name, the set name method of the parent to set its name. I can do that. So indirectly, you can access all the properties of the, of the parent, and you are supposed to. That's why you are actually improving a class by inheriting it to a new one. Of course, you have to have access to all its parts. If you are accessing, if you are building, I don't know, if you are building a, a motorcycle out of a bicycle, you can't say, OK, I'm not going to use the brakes anymore <laughs> because they're private. You can't do that. It has to be used. Otherwise, you're going to crash. So the parts and pieces of a bicycle that is private and is making a bicycle work properly still are used in a motorcycle, but in a private way. OK, just remember that. And all the acts, all the properties of a base class are accessible by children, but they may be indirectly using the methods of the parent, not everything. So if you want anything directly to be access accessible to you, uh, to, sorry, to a child, you must make them protected so the child can access it. Yes. I have no idea. I don't know, because I've never, I don't like leaving stuff by default. I don't like, because that always brings the question, what is the default? I don't like that. Because of that fact, I have never done it, and you should, I don't know the answer for it. I don't want you to know the answer for it. I want you to write what you want it to be there. Don't 
make people like me confused when I'm debugging your code. Oh, it didn't do anything. Is it public? Is it for I have to go read to find out what you have done? So don't never ever leave anything to defaults. Always specifically write what you write. For example, when you don't write a return type for a function, what is the return type? No, it's an int. See? When you don't write a return type for a function, by default it's an integer. He just said void. Don't leave anything to default. Always write what you want, want it there to be. Okay? Uh, are we okay down to here? How much time do I have? 20 minutes. So I'm going to finish the whole semester now. All right. So, so, we are down to, so we are good down to this point. We have no problem, right? Uh, so th there's a problem. I don't, I don't still know what's going to happen when, when a cat, like if I want to clone a cat, make a cat out of an old one. We can do it these days, right? If I want to do that, if I want to actually copy a cat into another one, what's going to happen to the animal part? Will it get copied or only the cat gets copied? I don't know. I haven't taught it yet. You don't know how that thing's happening yet, right? Because you don't know how the damn thing is happening, we're going to prevent it. We're going to say an animal cannot be cloned. OK? We are against cloning. Science is bad. OK? So because of that, how do I prevent an animal being cloned or copied or set to another one? I delete it. So I essentially say, if an animal is to be copied, don't allow it. If an animal is to be set to another animal, that's a new version of animal, animan. OK, animal, OK, constant, animal, reference. Later on, we may change these things. We Not may, we will change this to teach how copying is happening, OK? Now, remember I told you always you're, you, when you are creating a, 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 a destructor, always make it virtual, remember that? I just didn't follow my own thing. Although, although, when something is virtual in a parent, it inherits. It keeps going. I didn't need to write virtual for the destructor of the cat. Destructor of the cat, you don't know what a virtual is. We don't care what it is. But just know that if you make the destructor of the parent virtual, all the children will have virtual destructors, whatever that means. Are we OK with this? Are we okay? One. Are we okay? Two. Let's move to the next section. Let me just compile this, make sure it runs before I close it. All right, it runs. Perfect. Um, so let's close everything, so not to I have the wrong things open. Close all, close all documents. Right click, I'm right clicking. There you go, close all documents. Now I'm going to come to the next one. Add existing items. Let's go to the previous one. That is Mr. Cat. Copy everything. Come to here and paste. Oh, and add them all. Add them all. All right, and set this thing as startup project. Now that I have all those beautiful things, let's try a few things in here. We already mentioned what happens if I have a reference. And you remember, you know exactly what happened, right? Now, 
just to remind you of how things are happening, I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to make everything straight without all the new stuff that we learned. So I'm going to even remove the virtuals that I mentioned that you need to do. I'm going to remove the virtual from the animal. And I'm going to remove the virtual destructor from the cat. So let's create a cat and see what happens, just to remember. Tom the animal got created. Over it, cat the uh, animal, uh, Tom the cat got created with nine lives. Then Tom the cat with nine lives uh, goes out of scope, and then the animal part is removed. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Good. So I'm going to create an animal too. Also, let's add something to the cat. I'm going to, so the animal doesn't have act. Let's just remove the act, the heck with the act. We don't have it. Let's remove the um, action of animal totally so we don't have the animal. I'm going to remove all these comments because they were just for the first one for us to know. The rest we know. Have a clean code. And I expect you to do that when you are handling your project too. I don't want any comments in them, any debugging comments. Okay? All the things like, especially when I see you have a full function and you commented it and you didn't remove it, that's extremely sloppy. Okay? That's extremely sloppy. It's actually an insult. You're doing something like that and give it for code review. Okay? So in your life, you're going to become programmers, hopefully. When you do programming, you are to give your code for a code review before it gets merged to the main project. If you leave your comments over there, it's extremely insulting to a, a not following that, like they say the variable names are supposed to be like this, the tab is like that. They give you a book this thick to, that's the regulations of how you're supposed to code. If you leave your garbage in the code giving to a code reviewer, they're going to get really pissed. So don't do that, okay? Remove all the things, garbage that you have. Make a clean and nice code. When you, just think about for a second, you come outside, you stand in front of the mirror, you, I don't know, putting something nice on, you get out. You don't come out like with your pajamas, unless it's a pajama party, right? So you don't like, you, you don't come with a bed head, you know what I mean? You do something to your hair, hopefully. Or at least you do, you know, like me, you shave it all up. So you do something, right? So it's the same thing with your code. Before you present your code to someone else, Make it nice. Make it look beautiful. Make it represent you. If you leave it sloppy, it means I'm a sloppy person. Don't do that. Now, so, so the cat, uh, yeah. So now we're going to come over here in the cat tester that we have, and I'm going to create an animal. Okay, so I have a cat. I have, I have two things, a cat and an animal, right? Now, I want to, uh, and let's add a, uh, 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 a sound thingy to animal too. Let's 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 make an animal. To, uh, let's make a cat actually make a sound. So I'm gonna add because I removed the other one. I want to have an extra thing to talk about. So I'm gonna add one more thing to to the to the cat, which is making a sound. Okay, and uh, for making a sound for animal. I'm going to, uh, sorry, for a cat, I'm going to say Tom says meow or whatever. Uh, name. Says meow. Okay. So, so now it can make a sound too. So now we go back to tester. Now I have 
a cat and an animal, each one can act. And so if I want to serialize this, I want to say animal, make a sound, cat, make a sound. So I have to say, I have to say A the sound, right? That's the animal. And then C the sound. That's the sound of the cat coming out, right? What if I want to actually do this in an array? Because animals and cats are all animals, right? I want to have an array of animals. Some of them are cats, some of them are dogs, some of them are birds, some of them are fish, right? So I need to be able to have an array of animals and do things. I can do that. I can create a, an array of pointers of animals or reference of animals. References, pointers, it doesn't matter. Let's do pointers. So I'm going to say over here, animal, uh, pointer, and I'm going to have two pointers in here. And I'm going to set these two pointers to address of A and address of C. OK? And it's possible, because cat is an animal, right? Now I'm going to say for i integer i set to 0, i less than 2, and i plus plus. So I'm, 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 I'm running things through a loop that I'm going to say over here, ptri sound. Make a sound. And when I run this program, what's going to happen? It's going to say, creating Tom, the yada, 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 sound like an animal. The first one is sound. The second one is sound Tom like an animal. But wait a minute. Didn't I just create the meow thingy for it? Tom says meow? What the heck? That comes back to what I just said. Anytime you have a pointer or reference to an object, the closest method to that pointer's type will be called. The type of the pointer is animal. So always the animal actions of the animal is going to get called. The cat's not going to say meow. It's going to sound like an animal. So, so in here, I'm going to say uh, animal. I want to call it Boris, but then maybe somebody, nobody, have anybody seen Men in Black? No? Boris the animal? No? But then somebody may actually be, be, na be named Boris, and then, and then we're going to be in trouble. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be looking at it last one. So I'm going to say animal, uh, what am I going to say, uh, snake? OK, so I just want to have different names for it so we can see. OK, so we have uh, Tom the animal creating snake the animal, like snake and like Tom the animal, right? Uh, uh, sound like Tom the but I want it to be cat, not, 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 I want it to say, to say meow. So wh what can I do for the compiler to always call the latest version of a function if it exists? What can I do? So in here, let's say my cat can act and make a sound. Um, I removed the act from the animal now, I regret it. Let me pause. So thank you. I don't know where I start, but anyways. So what can I do right now to guarantee that the latest version of the sound is called, if it exists? Of course, when we are dealing with animal, animal is animal. It doesn't have any improvement. But when I have a cat, cat actually has some improvements. And I want them to be used. How do I do that? It's like this. I'll come to animal and I'm going to say, if anybody wants to, if anybody wants to make if improvement to an animal, OK, let the sound of the animal to get improved, but I want acts to remain the same. I don't want acts to get improved. OK, what do I do? I make the sound action virtual. That's the virtual that I told you we're going to find out later on. Now, I am telling to the compiler, whenever you're in an animal, 
and somebody tries to make a sound with this animal, look. See if this animal is actually an animal or it's some com other kind of animal, like a cat. If that's the case and there is an improvement, do it. Okay? Run it. And let's do the same thing with the act. So I'm going to say, now, if anyone is improving the act, let the new action to be called too. Now, when I run this program, what's going to happen? If I look at it now, this is the difference. S sound like a snake, act like a snake, but Tom says, meow, with no space, I have to put a space, and act playfully like Tom the cat. So now, although I have a pointer to an animal in my, in my code, but the action of a cat is called. Why? Because I made the method of the parent, the base, virtual. And that is a big thing, which means now I can create many different types of animals, put them all in an array, and say, shoo, go do whatever you are doing. And automatically, the compiler will select the best method fitting to that while it's calling, they're not going to just like act like animals. And that's the beauty of virtuality. So when you are making a method virtual, you are always telling the latest method of this thing is supposed to be called. Now let's go back in here. In here, let's save this. Now I'm going to do something else, and you'll see why I asked you to make a destructor virtual. If I did not create this thing locally, actually, and actually I said over here, instead of A, I said new animal snake. And new cat. Garfield. So now if I actually do something like this, what's going to happen? Take a look. I'm going to run it. It's going to work properly. It looks like it works properly. So it says creating the snake, the animal, creating Garfield, the animal, create the cat, sound like snake, sound like, act like snake and everything. But at the end, what happened to the destructors? I forgot to delete. Sorry, I need a for loop to delete uh, both of them. I forgot to delete, my apologies. And in here I have to remove the int. And here the int. I'll go int i. In here I'm going to say delete PRTI. PTRI, and we have to be quick because the next class is coming in. One more time, if I run it, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, today. Now take a look. This is where problem happens. It removes the snake, removes Garfield, the animal. What happened to the cat part? Because the destructor is not virtual, it only, compiler can only see the animal part and removes the animal from the memory. And the cat becomes memory leak. That's why always destructors must be virtual in case somebody inherits from our class. If you don't make the destructor virtual and somebody does dynamic memory allocation with an inherited class, they will have memory leak. That's why you must always Always, always make a destructor virtual. Where's my destructor? And that guarantees that always the latest version of the destructor is called, and therefore everything's deallocated from the memory, and not only the animal part. Now, as you see, Garfield, the cat with nine lives, that dies, and then uh, the Garfield, the animal.
Are we okay? Have yourself a beautiful day. Don't forget you have a quiz the next day you're coming in on these material. Have a beautiful day.